Hey everyone, this is Jerry with Big Dreams Little Homestead. On a walk with my beagles. There she goes marking her own land there. Oh yeah. We got some things going on. You can see them pallets over there. Oh yeah. We're getting ready. We're getting ready to build a chicken coop and uh, some hoop houses so we can get our aquaponics going get our chickens going so uh, my little dog she loves her walks yes she does oh ggs so today I was going to talk about a comment I got from David West Westman I believe if I if I say that wrong I apologize and he was talking about the the video with the penny stove and he said he loved the frugality of the penny stove and that he subscribed to a channel that has a million subs and and uh, but they have all the latest latest gadgets and I know who he's talking about of course and uh, this channel is not a place to badmouth other channels just so you know, so if you get deleted or hidden, you'll know why. And I'm not saying that's what he was doing at all, because it's not. It was a good comment he made. And what he was saying was that this is supposed to be a life of minimalism. A life of getting back to nature, getting back to simplicity, getting back to... to what makes sense to the human psyche and I understand what he's saying and uh, you know you're never gonna see a tractor on our homestead I'm, I, I can promise you that right now uh, if, if I break that promise it'll be because <coughs> the county or something comes in and says this is this and that's that and that'll be that but other than that we use hand tools and we're going to do a lot of digging and you're going to see us do a lot of digging matter of fact we've got a stump it took us three times with the chainsaw and a couple chains to cut this tree down this tree i i don't know what is going on with it it's a nasty sappy mess of disgustingness <coughs> And we finally got it down. And now the stump. We've dug at this stump three or four times. So, one thing you'll see on this channel is that we don't take no for an answer. It can be no today, but we're going to revisit. And we're going to revisit again. And we're going to revisit again. Until we get to success, until we get what it is we need accomplished so you're going to see us hacking away at this stump that's coming i've been meaning to do it i just haven't gotten to it but uh yeah i, I could go get a stump grinder and grind it i've used stump grinders i've done pretty much every menial labor task that there's there is going i'm also going to show you some digging too and I'm gonna show you some common mistakes that your average digger see I'm not an average digger I'm more of a professional at this point the amount of digging I've done and uh, so I'm gonna show you some common mistakes people do with tools we'll be doing a lot of digging on our channel and uh, we'll let you see what that looks like manually I mean, we could go get a, we could go get a tractor, but we're not going to because it's just not cost effective for us. And I just happen to like the, the feel of the manual labor, which I didn't like when I was doing it as, as a young man. But now that I'm an older man, it, it has its appeal. You know, there's something primal 
about taking something that's causing you problems and beating the heck out of it until it does what you want it to do. There's something primal about that. So, yeah, that's coming. But uh, back to his comment. You know, I tell you, tiny homes is a big thing right now, and it's unfortunately a big business. And, you know, for our house, all said and done, land and everything, I'd say we're about 10,000 10, right now. I see people buying custom tiny homes for 50, this is not counting the land, for 50 to $100,000. And I'm just blown away at why you would do that. There's something special about, you know, buying your own land and, and searching until you can find a building you can afford. We paid cash for everything. And uh, there's something primal about that. About, uh, speaking of primal. She sees that dog over there. Well, I guess we'll let her get on with her business. There's something in primal about this life. And to go and, and get yourself into major debt so that you can have something that's pretty much the same thing as a, as a mobile home at three times the mobile home price. I don't get it. But I guess to each their own, so. But I think most people are looking to see how they can get into this lifestyle as inexpensive as possible. Let's be nice. Let's be nice, you two. Mm -hmm. The two ladies. Will it be war? Or will it be friendship? There you go, girl. Yeah. You can say hi. Be nice. All right. Let's go. Good girls. Mm-hmm. Both of them, actually. Yep. This dog has come so far. I tell you, she would have been poor already back in the day. I mean, anything that was living and, and moving, she was going to make sure they understood they better not mess with her. So yeah, Dave Westman, I tell you, I feel your pain. I, I, I understand what you're saying. And, uh, you know, this is kind of a rambling video. But I did just want to uh, respond to his comment and let him know I, I understand what he's saying. And I see the same thing. When I see people talking about $50,000 tiny homes, my mind is just boggled at the concept of someone buying a $50,000 uh, tiny home why not just get the real thing at that price I mean I, I don't get it why because you want all the cabinets and the mine's I tell you what my our tiny home 
Uh, girl, get away from that turtle. Come on, poor turtle. That, that turtle didn't cross the road fast enough, I tell you that. Um, our, our, our tiny home is going to look like an RV inside when we get done. It's going to have all the cabinetry, uh, cubbies everywhere, just like an RV. That's kind of how I look at or like a boat, like a like a uh, boat that goes in on the sea, you know, that's that's kind of how our electrical is set up. Uh, the same, a lot of our parts are marine parts. Uh, I wanted to make sure it was up to code and also beyond because the last thing you want in this situation is a fire. So, you know, if I'm gonna set up that electrical, I wanna make sure that it's safe and you know, you do get some of that, I'm sure, with a $50,000 tiny home. But you also get the bill. In this economy, in this world we live in, with everything we know that's just going on, I just don't, I don't get it myself. So I understand exactly what he's saying. And, uh, and the truth is, there's nothing wrong with some good, hard work. Nothing wrong with it. And uh, when we do it, we're working for ourselves. Ooh, look at this deer. Ain't much left for him now. Come on. Come on, leave him alone. Leave him alone. One thing we're going to do when we get our chickens going is we're going to be out here and some people may find us disgusting others may be fascinated but we're actually going to be picking up roadkill off the side of the road I'm sure that I got people saying what? you're going to do what? roadkill while your chickens can't eat the roadkill if you get it fresh enough, um, they still can't eat it. But what they can eat is the maggots that it generates. And uh, it's called a maggot generator. You put the roadkill in a bucket and the maggots are produced. And the bucket has holes the right size for them to fall through but not the carcass to fall through. And you hang that bucket up where your chickens can scratch at the bottom. And they'll actually bump. I've seen them. I've seen them bump the bucket to cause them to fall out. And then they gobble them up. In a worst case scenario, what a lot of people don't know is that same roadkill you can't eat. You cannot eat roadkill. But you can't eat those maggots and they will keep you alive and it's protein and it's fat. You know, these are ideals. Like I said, this channel is about doing things in new ways that you may not have even thought of. Ways of survival. That's one. Maggots, very healthy for you. They're filled with... Uh, uh, proteins and fats and uh, all the stuff your body's going to be craving so you know get your little stir fry going fry them up you'll never know the difference so yeah even roadkill can keep you alive again you can't eat the roadkill and remember guys everything you see on this channel is for entertainment purposes only. I'm not an expert at anything other than survival. And I don't have my certificates. I just have the fact that I've made it through all these things that I've dealt with over the years. Ooh, I'm getting a walk today. Jeez, he's pushing me. She loves her little walks.
So Dave, I really do appreciate your comment. And uh, for those of you trying to get into this lifestyle, take your time. Try to find out how you can do it as cheaply as you possibly can. And that's probably the best way. There's work involved. You know, when you buy that $50,000 tiny home, I'm sure they'll bring it over and they'll set it right in place for you and you won't have to do anything. It'll be wired up for you and everything. But then you got that bill every single month. And if you don't have that bill, your dream is going on the back of a truck with somebody and it's going somewhere else. Don't be that guy. I appreciate everyone that came through for this rambling affair. And I will catch y'all next time. Peace.